The 1973 championship round draws the largest field ever. Look at them. No different than the guy next door. But gambling for this lineup is no hobby. It's their profession. I have the kind of a mind that whenever I see something happening, I don't know why, but almost automatically, in the back of my head, there's a question, can I do this better? This is my nature. I can't even help myself. Poker on TV is something we take for granted today. Poker After Dark, Poker Night in America, Poker Masters, Super High Roller Bowl, and the granddaddy of them all, the World Series of Poker. The river card is the deuce! The river comes home! It is over here at the Rio! It wasn't always this way. Back in the day, poker players were thought to be hustlers, drunks, and criminals. Shifty gamblers playing in dim, smoky rooms. Not exactly TV friendly. Beginning in the early 70s, the only poker shown on TV was an hour-long documentary recounting the highlights of the World Series. Doyle Brunson, a one-time high school principal, is next to tap out. Now a respected gambler, Dolly Doyle is armed with a master's degree in education, but it's no help here. It was just simply, this is what happened in Vegas. A group of people came in, this is the world champion poker player. A couple of interviews, showed a couple of hands. I have a lot of inventions. I have almost a hundred patents to my name, and this is one of them. Over the years, the players changed, but the TV presentation stuck to the same general format. I found it the most boring thing in the world to sit there, watch two guys, you don't know what they have, and they're thinking and thinking and thinking, and then the guy throws his hand away. That to me is about as dull as it gets. I met Henry Ornstein in 1987 at the Bicycle Club, playing seven card stud. And he would sit next to me, uh, and every time I would throw my hand away, especially when there was action in the hand. Hey, well, I could have had a flush draw that I missed, or I could have been bluffing that I gave up, or something. As soon as I throw my hand away, he'd reach out to look at my whole cards. So he just wanted to see everybody's whole cards. Born in Poland in 1923, Henry Orenstein always loved games. But his childhood was interrupted by an invading army. Henry and two of his brothers were the only members of their family to survive the concentration camps. After the war, Henry immigrated to America and found success in the toy business. His inventive mind and playful spirit were behind some of the most successful toys of their time. But his most influential idea came in the early 90s when he happened to catch the World Series of Poker on TV. It was very boring, because you watched, you watched, you didn't know what was going on. And of course, to Henry, that was unacceptable, because he loved the game, and he kept thinking that everybody should know what we're doing. Everybody should know there's so much more to play in this game. I figured out quickly that if we just cut the table and put a glass on top, and then have camera installed underneath, the audiences could see all the cards, which made it very interesting. I really hated the idea of showing cards in a whole cam. It just seemed like this was not what poker was about. There is a big element of disguise in the way you want to play hands and the way you play. A lot of times I hate to run a bluff or something when I know somebody's going to see it. I'm like, if I do this on TV, they're going to see it and they're going to know, and I'll never be able to do it again. So. That's how I always think, and I try and you know, play more ABC than I maybe normally would. As a professional poker player, I would say, how can you expect professional poker players to show their whole cards? That's how they make their living. You're telling me to expose the way I play? Really? What did the players say when you said, let's look at your whole cards? The well, they thought that uh, the players wouldn't like it, but I said the desire to be seen on TV will be stronger than any other consideration. I had no doubt about it, and history shows I was right. The first show to feature the whole cam was BBC's Late Night Poker in 1999. 
We'll be using under-the-table cameras tonight to show you the cards. We're going to have the luxury of being able to know everybody's hands, but the players have no way of knowing anyone's cards but their own. The program was a success, and American producers quickly took notice. Going all in with nothing. A stunning play from Moneymaker, who missed his draws, has nothing, and now has put Sam Fulham all in. Is Chris Bluffer in this turn? No. You know, it was like a perfect storm of whole cam being there, television being interested, and all of a sudden here comes the internet and online poker. With poker exploding in popularity, a new breed of player was born, the poker celebrity. Then all of a sudden it hit TV and there was just a total different air about it. I actually was a rock star. You know what I'm saying? That's how you were treated, like kind of like a rock star. Yeah. And it was, it, was, it was strange. I mean, I would never imagine that the uh, high stakes poker will make me in category of a uh, superstar and a uh, celebrity, you know? Today, televised poker is evolving along with its industry. A new generation of players and a changing audience call for innovative storytelling. A pioneer in the field, Mori Eskandani, continues to find new ways to bring poker to the world. Poker on TV is going to be outlasting my grandkids, your grandkids, you get, just because the game is so amazing. The game itself is just captures everybody's heart and soul. As the inventor of the whole cam, Henry Orenstein has earned his place in poker history. What's the secret for staying sharp at poker into your old age? What's the secret of staying sharp at poker? At, at your, your age, age. Your at your age. age. You eat a pound of raw cabbage every day. <laughs> <laughs> I'll check. I bet. I call. Kings over. Kings and jacks. Tens over. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm.